Alrighty, guys. So, Blader just came out of my server, and for all the people, I see a lot of people dumping mags into him. And I figured I'd actually do a video on him for the people who don't know about Blader. And, well, Blader's just a damn good commander. He really is. Um, a well-built Blader, and he really only has one build. But uh, a good Blader can take on a Golem. He can F up a Rogers. Uh, a Stella, it depends who goes first, obviously. Um, but yeah, a blader, so a well-built blader is very scary. So let's go into him, All right? Uh, and we're going to talk into his uh, pros and cons in a minute. But let's just cover him in this cover him for now. Uh, his pounce. His pounce is almost like bullets, uh, ghost cannon. It's his own separate attack. Um, if he just activates his pounce in that turn, he will have his normal attack, then his pounce separately. So it is his own separate attack. Uh, 20% chance to trigger before next action. Deal damage to enemy, uh, which is activator's percentage of current HP. Um, skills by 1.5%. Actually, no, 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 no. By 0.5%. Sorry. It scales by 0.5%. So that means it's going to be 30% when maxed. So pounds is going to hit for 30% of your HP, of your current HP. So if you go second, your stack gets hit, it loses some troops. Um, you're going to hit, obviously, weaker than you would have at the beginning with full stacks. It sucks, but it's a decent balancing. Because it's, it's, it is its own separate attack, so it's not bad. Now, the Call of the Hunt. This is his bread and butter, what makes him scary. It scales by 1% per level. So when max, it'll be 60%. And 60% chance to trigger... Before next action until the activator's next turn, our troops' attack, crit, and accuracy will increase by 1% uh, per level. So that means it'll be 60 when fully maxed, right? His attack, crit, and accuracy will go up for a full rotation. When it says term, that's what it means, a full rotation. So if it activates on stack 1, it'll stay up until it comes back to stack 1. And it stacks, okay? So if it activates on stack 1, 2, 3, it will stack. Okay, that is just busted. His attack, crit, and accuracy will stack. It's a 60% skill. So this is one of those commanders. He's like uh, Galileo. Um, the longer the battle goes on for, the harder he's going to hit. And that is just scary. All right? And then his awakening. His awakening, like, on Rogers, on Rogers, it's like meh, right? On Golem, it's okay-ish. But on Blader, it is downright scary. Uh, we're going to go into that for, like, real quick. Uh, let's go into his fucking lore. It's kind of stupid. We know his, his, um, his Flare son. I mean, let's look at him. Let's look at Flare. Yeah, see? That's his son. See? Like, we know it's his son. But uh, let's go to his, his lore. Blader, before starting anew, was an uncompromising outlaw. Ruthless to all who knew him. Now he is a famous actor best known for his roles as a fierce outlaw. So, pretty much, uh, so he used to be an outlaw. Now he's an actor pretending to be an outlaw. So he's just acting out his own life. So he got a contract for his own life story and now he just acts it out, I guess. Um, it doesn't say anything about Blader, but we know that's his dad. Oops. Okay, so let's go into his gear. Now, unfortunately, Blader only has one build. Um, it's a very set build, and that's the build that's going to make him the best. Uh, Magiwell pants or Voltar pants. Uh, let's see, I have Nixar pants. I don't have Magiwell, but I'll show you guys the Magiwell. So Voltar for accuracy because Blader has no guaranteed hit or Magiwell's. Now, why Magi Wells? Well, since he airships have stupid crit, period. I mean, they have stupid crit. And his own ability ups his crit yet again. He's going to crit almost 100% of the time when his tech is fully maxed. And that crit damage, you work, you're going to hit way, way harder with crit damage. All right? So I'm, I'm sure you got an idea where I'm going with this. Uh, what headpiece? Out of the Abyss. It's not for the just the accuracies for the crit damage in there as well. Uh, some people might say, well, I'll just run mean death star. No, 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 no. 
you want the crit damage from the Eye of the Abyss. Okay, now what weapon? Well, one Skywalker, one Apocalypter. Or, or you can do Dual Skywalker. This is one of those few commanders that you can do Dual Skywalker on. Why? Again, his Call of the Haunt. It's going to up his attack, his accuracy, and his crit. I mean, it stacks. If just two Call of the Haunts go off, he has 120, well, one max, obviously. He'll have 120% crit. That means every single attack he does is going to crit. We've already covered this. If you have 100% crit, you're going to crit 100% of the time. His accuracy will also go up by 120 if it just goes off twice. His attack also, it's like having a free thunder just from that skill. I mean, it's its so busted. Uh, so yeah, dual Skywalker, uh, if, if you want, or one Skywalker, one APOC. Um, I have the Abyss. Uh, creator chest play. I don't have one personally, but uh, let's see if the events are going on. Nope, it's gone. I would have been nice to show you guys the creator chest play, but uh, the creator chest play, it's it's necessary for him. He really does need it. A black knight will do, but a creator will help his sur his survivability in the long run. We'll go over that in a minute. Uh, pants. We already talked about it. Voltar or Magiwa, right? Because he needs to land a hit now. Back to why his awakening is scary. If you saw that build, right? It's crit damage. Again, Call of the Haunt. He's almost guaranteed a crit with his own tech, which can give him up to 230% crit when fully maxed. When everything's fully maxed on his tech, airship tech, he will guarantee a critical hit on all his attacks. That's where the awakening comes from. With all that accuracy from Skywalkers, APOC, Accuracy Jewels, uh, I have the Abyss or Voltar Pants. His Awakening will hit almost all the enemy's troops. And with that crit, he's just going to hit stupid amounts. Uh, like, the damage is just stupid. Um, the crit's going to obviously double the damage already. And this scales by 0.5%. So that's 30% of your attack. And don't forget, he buffs his own attack. Right? He buffs actually his ATK. Now his attack is ATK, his base, which is pretty ridiculous. But uh, this takes a, a portion of his attack, right, 30%, and hits all the enemy stacks with it. But not just that, so it's going to be a crit. Remember, it's going to crit. So that automatically takes it from 30 to 60%, plus all the extra crit damage you're going to put on him. You're just going to demolish back row, and oh my, you're just going to demolish everything, pretty much. If... Uh, if the back row, well, yeah, with that much accuracy, you're going to demolish everything. So it doesn't really matter. Back row, front row, he's just going to demolish everything. He's one of the few commanders that can F up a Rogers. Even if he goes second, he can seriously do a lot of damage to Rogers. Because, again, every if his attack uh, all skill, if his awakening goes off, he's going to crit on every stack of troops. And all it takes is Rogers not activating his defensive stance once. That's all it takes. And then Blader will F him up. Blader's just scary. Like, yeah, you guys see why his awakening is so scary with all that crit damage and accuracy. Um, you can get a, a little bit more accuracy that you can dodge. So finding someone that can out-dodge him is going to be kind of hard. Specifically with the Call of the Haunt. I mean, it's it's pretty he's really scary. So let's go into his jewels. Um, he only has two jewels he's going to run, which would be... Gemini, obviously, and oops, handbook. There we go. And Scorpio. Uh, why Scorpio? It's a guaranteed hit, right? And that's it. That's pretty much just it. Um, he needs a guaranteed hit until his call of the hunt goes off and he starts stacking. He's gonna rely on the Gemini jewels or the Scorpio jewels for him to hit hard. I mean, he's going to hit hard, okay? But once the call of the hunt starts to take over. It's done, okay? Uh, you pretty much just need these for the... You need the Scorpio and Gemini for the first two to three uh, hits. Then after that, his Call of the Haunt should have taken off and he will clean up. It is just scary. Um, so, I, I, I really wouldn't run um, Ares uh, Aquarius Jewels on him. I, I get it. You probably want to have, have him have some survivability. But uh, Cancer and... Aquarius don't really help him out that much. I mean, he's 
pure glass cannon. If you look, again, we go back to his, his setup. That's the only setup that's going to make him good. Um, Dual Skywalker, Out of the Abyss, Creator, and uh, Voltar, Magic Ball Pants. He's, he's a glass cannon, pl plain and simple. Um, giving him Cancer and Aquarius Jewels kind of takes away from that glass cannon kind of thing. You know, it makes him balanced, which makes him not really all that good, not really all that bad. That glass cannon build can take on Golems. Rogers, Stellas, it depends who goes first, right? Because, I mean, you don't really set up a brawler against Stella. Stella's more of an assassin. She's going to go off and hit you with one stack. And as as a blader, you have to send four stacks. So let's go into what makes what's the downside about him. Um, he is very scary. His awakening will demolish back row, front row, doesn't matter. And he is hard, hard to dodge, right? But what's the downside? He's an airship commander. Um, he requires four stacks. Just like Rogers, that's one of his biggest downside. So he is gonna be a, a bit expensive to run. Uh, running him with T two, no problem. Again, he's gonna hit hard with T two because again, Call of the Haunts. Um, with T fours, that's probably as high as you want to go with him. Uh, your T sevens in Galactic Battle, sure. But uh, then you're giving away points. That's the downside. You have to send full stacks with him. That is his biggest downside. Um, is he easy to get? Yeah, he's easy to get. He's easy to complete the quest with. I mean, his skills are great. He's a hard-hitting commander, but at the end of the day, he requires full stacks. That's his biggest downside. Apart from that, he cannot one-stack bust all that well. His Call of the Haunt 60% activation can go off, and with his accuracy build and crit, he is going to crit still. Okay, There's still a chance he's going to crit. Very well. Well, very high chance it's going to crit. And the crit damage is still going to go through. Obviously, that's a passive buff that's just going to, going to, walk, going to go off, period. But uh, can he one stack bust? Maybe with a pounce. Maybe. Okay. Um, but it's 20% for the pounce, 60 for the Call of the Haunt. I mean, he, he would have to be relying on his jewels a lot for the one stack bust. Because, again, no guaranteed hit. And he's not like Stella where he can rotate through all the actions and go off multiple times. He either goes off or he doesn't. But, again, he's a glass cannon. So, it's really up to you. Blader is a damn good commander. I mean, no commander can out-dodge him with Call of the Haunt. The longer the battle goes on, the more he's going to freaking just become scary. I mean, the longer the battle goes on, the, the scarier he gets and stronger he gets. But if he fights a golem... And that golem just happens to go off on every single one of his buffs and jewels. He's going to get effed up. So he can take on a golem. But it really depends on the golem's gear and everything. I mean, I've seen him take on a golem in a fair fight and win with T2. And take out that golem's freaking T5. I've seen it. Okay. I, I was not the biggest believer in Blader. I really wasn't. Until my buddy told me, like, nah, you underestimate him. And he proved me wrong. He proved me wrong. The only reason he got rid of his blader was for Stella because Stella can one stack bust very well. And blader, he can't stack one, one stack bust and he requires four stacks. So in the bigger picture, Stella's way better than blader because she only requires one stack. But that's the only downside because there he requires four stacks and he can't one stack bust that well. So Okay, so those are the two only downsides. Besides that, okay... He's a solid commander. He's going to hit hard. And one more thing I forgot about. Uh, strength and Weaken. He can actually be he can be taken out by Strength and Weaken. Obviously, his gear does not... His everyday build does not allow for a God of Speed Pants or Ghost Mask, unfortunately. So he can get caught out by Strength and Weaken. So that's three things, three, down, three downsides to him. Apart from that, he's a solid commander. He's going to hit hard. And if you get T9 with him... That's just scary because they're just gonna they're just gonna get stronger and stronger and stronger the longer the fight goes on. I mean, yeah, <laughs> he's just scary, guys. Um, but there you go. If you guys like the video, like it, subscribe. Why not? Uh, if you guys didn't like it, dislike it. Let me know you didn't like it. Comment down below. Tell me what I got wrong. What you didn't like about it. That's how I grow too. See, we can grow together. But uh, again. I wasn't the number one fan of Blader. My buddy made me see the light. 
he showed me fights where his 50k blader was taking on 60 70k golems and winning that is what turned me around i was like what i mean blader's just scary guys i mean he's he's pretty underestimated but again he requires full stack so just remember that his everyday build is very expensive there is no new build for him there really isn't um he i mean you could use um not thunders but which other ones uh let's see i don't even use them i don't even use them at all so i don't even know their names okay you can use sun strikers give him some crit but he's gonna buff himself either way so it's no big deal um he needs the eye of the abyss he needs accuracy he needs voltar pants and once he gets uh, dual skywalker uh, eye of the abyss then you give him magic well pants um, he requires accuracy, period. So he's a very expensive commander gear-wise, too. Cheap to get because he's, he comes in the S class. But uh, you have to invest a lot of gear in him, a lot of upgrades to that gear, and you need some really good jewels from that accuracy. If you can get that, he will be one of the scariest commanders. I mean, everybody would just not want to fight you. I've seen it. I've seen it. Nobody wants to attack into a blader that's built correctly. All right. So again, if you like the video, like it, subscribe, let me know. If you don't like it, again, let me know. But uh, there you go. I have like three more videos to make today. So I will see you guys in those next videos if you guys want to watch. See you.